interacting with others. See, and that's why I love what you guys are doing over at Ascendigo. You can check out their website at ascendigo.org. As, as you're giving uh, uh, folks with autism, families with autism, and, of course, the folks that are, are dealing with autism, experiences that maybe they can actually help find what they're good at and, and find that, you know what, autism doesn't mean you can't live your life. In fact, it does. Uh, it means you can actually or possibly even live your life even more uh, full or as full as anybody else just with autism. Absolutely. And that's, that's what's exactly so right. that's ex- that's what's so awesome about what your group is. I mean, cuz I have family member I have a family member uh, with autism. I, I have a, a close friend of mine who's whose child is also autistic and um, at, at times it, it, it's hard on the family and, and and yet there's so much hope and you guys offer that. It, you're right, David. It is so hard on the family. Um, as I said, you know, people with autism come up with all types of challenges and abilities, but, you know, so many of our families are dealing just to get through one day at a time. Um, and particularly, you know, it's been magnified with the COVID pandemic in the past year. And, you know, a lot of these kids and even adults have not been able to go and spend time in the community and with others. And, and unfortunately, you know, that has produced a lot of what we call regression, meaning, you know, they've lost skills, they've lost some of the things that they worked so hard for so many years to figure out, and now, you know, they're forced to stay at home and, and you know, understand a world where people are wearing masks and all that kind of stuff, and, you know, it's hard for most of us, let alone if you have, you know, a, a condition like autism that oftentimes comes with cognitive um, challenges as well, so... Um, but, you know, we're very fortunate that we've kind of weathered this storm, so to speak. Um, we continue to offer our adult services throughout this entire pandemic. We went to telehealth on our outreach services. We're back, you know, in our community and in our offices giving uh, behavioral services directly to families here in the Roaring Fork Valley. And we were able to host just really a a downsized day version of our camp this past summer. We're going to continue to do that this coming summer. And um, we are still a very viable organization and we're looking forward to the future and being able to continue to help these individuals and their families really uh, realize their potential and and experience things in life that are so important to their overall, overall health and well-being. Speaking with Peter Bell, he's the president and CEO of Ascendigo in the Roaring Fork Valley. Now, if you want to learn more about autism, you can always go to autism.org. It's a great website uh, uh, with all sorts of resources and helping you understand what autism is. But once you get to that point, what does Ascendigo, what services does Ascendigo in the Roaring Fork Valley provide for families and, 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 and those who have autism? What kind of services do you provide? So our flagship is our summer camp. Uh, That's what we started back in 2004, and uh, we offer that every summer. We have people from all over the world who come to that, but we also have a lot of local families. And one of the really important things about our Send to Go Blue Aspen event that is taking place on Saturday is that we raise money that then goes into a scholarship fund, so we're able to help families um, who otherwise wouldn't be able to attend our camp be there. And a lot of those families actually come from the local community here. So um, we're really excited about that. In addition to our summer camp, we offer ski lessons in the winter. Last year we did over 300 uh, ski lessons um, here, and we're continuing to do that now. And then we also have what we call outreach services for local families, which is uh, behavioral speech and other uh, types of services um, to help Children of all ages, uh, from we have a little guy who's just under two years old now, um, and that goes all the way up to uh, 19 uh, in terms of our outreach services. And then we also have a uh, program for uh, adults. We call it Life Enrichment, and we have about um, eight adults that we're uh, offering services to on a daily basis. Uh, many of them live here in the valley, and, you know, independently in the community, uh, and we provide the residential supports for them to be able to do that as well. So um, those are, you know, the range of different services. Uh, we are a fairly large organization in the sense that we employ a lot of people, both uh, full-time year-round as well as during the season, um, we currently have about 60 full-time employees because of all wow. the services that we're offering through the 
community here. Uh, one in 54 children are uh, diagnosed with autism. That's how prevalent it is. And then we don't think about that, but it's so prevalent. And again, I want, I just, I want to harken back because this fundraiser is so key to you guys. It's the 10th annual. And of course, all this costs money. If you have 60 employees, it costs money. Some are volunteers, some are paid, whatever. It costs money, these types of things. And what you're doing is so key is you're helping kids. Just because you have autism doesn't mean you're not good at something. Just because you have autism doesn't mean you can't find your way in life. In fact, many people find great success. Not all. There are some the, the most severe autistic folks that are, are going to need help for a long time. But for many people yeah. that have autism, you can help them find out what they're good at so they can go be great at it. Very well said. And uh, we can't do that on our own. We need the support of our community. Uh, both financially in terms of fundraisers, but also just being available and being able to um, help us make these uh, the, the clients that we serve feel comfortable in this community. And that's one of the reasons we believe that Roaring Fork Valley is one of the most autism-friendly communities in the country. Um, and, you know, we've been doing this now for 17 years, and uh, we've had really wonderful reception from this community and, and everyone has really gone out of their way to make us feel welcome to give employment opportunities to the individuals we serve to you know make their families feel comfortable when they're coming here and visiting and a whole host of different things it really does take a village as someone once said um, and we are really grateful for uh, this village and community that uh, people have made and, and have welcomed us uh, to make it the place that it is. And there is so much hope. Uh, autism is not a sentence of, of a negative. I mean, there is still, there's still plenty of hope and ascend to go is a first step in helping you find out uh, where to go and, and how to, uh, uh, to grab that hope and, and, and make something out yeah. of it. Now, as far as uh, the 10th annual anniversary, now it, your fundraiser is um, it's going to be a little different this year. However, you still got a bunch of great silent auction opportunities and some pretty neat things you can do uh, with a gift to Ascendigo. Tell me a little bit about your event. Sure. So uh, as predicted, we are going virtual this year. Um, we are going to be hosting a uh, virtual fundraiser um, on Saturday, uh, February 13th. Um, we're actually hosting it at the Hotel Jerome, which is where we have typically uh, been with the main event, um, but there will be a few of us there. Uh, we're going to be doing a short program that starts at 6 o'clock on Saturday night, um, and uh, we're going to feature a new mission video. We have a uh, family, a, a parent of one of our uh, summer campers that's going to be doing a message. We'll be doing a, a silent auction. We're going to be doing uh, a paddle race and so forth. Um, you don't have to pay to attend, but you can. Uh, certainly, we hope that we actually have some people who are hosting dinners in their homes and things like that. Um, we have other people who are uh, paying, uh, making a donation to uh, be a part of it. But don't have to pay if you don't want to, um, and that's fine. Um, but you do have to register, so please go to ascendigo.org and look for the button where you can register for the event. Uh, again, it's going to start at 6 p.m. Mountain Time on Saturday, the 13th of February. should last about 35, 40 minutes, and uh, we really hope that people come. Um, like I said, we'll be doing a paddle raise. That, that's what we use to offer scholarships and other things that we need for our programming here in the Valley. Um, and uh, we look forward to having as many people as possible who are able to show up and uh, really support us and, and be there uh, like they have been for so many years. You can do, uh, you can go to ascendigo.org, ascendigo.org to learn more about it. And it doesn't have to be a large amount of money. You, heck, you can send them 10 bucks and they'll be grateful. Um, so uh, ascendigo.org is a website. I wanted to ask you a question before we wrap this up. Uh, sure. Kids uh, uh, and, or, and or adults with autism do they know something's wrong? I mean, when they go through life, do they know something's off? Do they know something's different? It's a great question, David, and I think the answer is some do and some do not. So uh, there's no question that um, there are many people who have what I'll call kind of uh, 
a lighter form of autism. Um, you know, they may just be socially awkward or not comfortable around other people. Uh, they know that they're different. You know, these are the people um, and children who most likely are subject to getting bullied in school and things like that. So um, they, they do oftentimes have an acute awareness that they are different and how challenging it is for them to um, fit in uh, and, and have friendships and relationships with other people. There are those who are probably fairly oblivious to um, how different they are and that they have something that is called autism where they understand what that means. Um, and, you know, it would be hard for me to give a number uh, in terms of what that difference is. I'm not aware of any research that's ever explored that. But, um, I, you know, I, I think it is safe to say that some people with autism are very aware uh, of their differences. And it, and it can lead to other forms of mental health challenges, whether it be uh, depression or anxiety or a whole host of other things. Um, and then there are those who are perhaps just kind of beautifully unaware of the fact that they are that different and um, they're very comfortable with who they are and that's how they go through life. Um, so, um, you know, we, we see both, um, you know, in all of our different programs. Um, and, you know, certainly we help people understand that being different is um, – not not necessarily a bad thing and um you know we we work very hard and i think you know not only is it something that we do with our, our clients but we also help our staff and the people who spend their time supporting our uh, participants helping them understand you know what that's like and what we can do to be supportive and and, and help them feel really good about themselves um and you know that's i think important quality for any of us uh, in life, particularly during these challenging times. That we now, have. One of my listeners, do you have a few more minutes? Because uh, this is a, a fascinating do, yeah. uh Okay, one of my listeners wants me to ask you a question uh, about non -learn, uh, nonverbal learning disability and where that falls on the autistic or autism spectrum. It's a really good question. Um, you know, it, the, clinically, um, it is a different diagnosis. Um, however, uh, there are many people on the autism spectrum who also have this nonverbal learning disability and so forth. So some of it comes down to, you know, how many of the boxes you can check um, in assessment scale and things like that. So, um, and sometimes, you know, the clinician may have a hesitation of giving an autism doc, uh, diagnosis and might give this other type of uh, nonverbal learning disability and so forth. So it's a pretty, uh, you know, kind of technically uh, uh, sophisticated uh, question, uh, but it is possible that it could have both. Um, but uh, it's not necessarily, you know, if you have the nonverbal learning disability, that you also would meet criteria for an autism diagnosis. Speaking with Peter Bell, uh, Sendigo, uh, President and CEO of Ascendigo, uh, dealing with uh, or elevating the spectrum for individuals with autism in the Roaring Fork Valley and beyond. I want to leave with just, uh, something. Autism, um, it's not a sentence. It's, there, there are still, uh, there are things that are advantages that perhaps some autistic kids have. You were talking about Silicon Valley, for example, that some, many of the most, uh, successful people in, in Silicon Valley may have autism, uh, in, in, in their, well, in their lives because it makes them good at certain things. What are some of the qualities you see? And I know this is a general question, but some of the qualities sure. that some people that with autism possess. It really is, it, there's a range of different things. Uh, so, you know, I know some people with autism who are incredibly kind and friendly and, you know, can connect with other people and so forth. And even though that is a core deficit of autism, um, it's not necessarily something that is going to be consistent across the board. So, um, you know, there are people with autism who are, great runners. They're um, amazing at being able to go out and water ski, for example. We have a young man who's in our adult program who, you know, during the summer will uh, go out skiing four or five times a week, and he's 
really, really good at it. And so, um, you know, there's just a range of different things. Um, you know, uh, gosh, um, now I, I really I, can't generalize. Like one that, of the so. examples I have is I know there's some recycling companies out there that have uh, they sure. focus in on bringing autistic kids in because they're really good at just yeah. focusing in on uh, this man, this work that requires focus. Yep. Uh, and they're, they have uh, advantages to maybe me who has no focus um, uh, for yep. doing something like that. The, you know, those are the <laughs> – these types of advantages actually um, a, a favor in a, in a way uh, autistic sure. kids. Yeah. It's a great, uh, and thank you for mentioning that. So there is a new organization in the Valley called Blue Star Recycling. They have a facility down in Basalt, and what they do is they do electronic recycling. So if you have a computer, if you have a modem, if you have a phone or whatever it might be, uh, an old stereo receiver, um, you can drop those things off. Usually they have pickups and things like that, and they have individuals with autism and other developmental disorders and because of their attention to detail and the propensity to like to do tasks, you know, repetitively, um, they can take these things apart and put them into the right different receptacles so that they can then be recycled appropriately and so forth. And then they have trucks who come in and haul this stuff away, and um, it's a really wonderful form of recycling. And so they started on the front range, and they have recently come here to the Roaring Fork Valley, and we are partnering with them. And, um, you know, we uh, are finding that this is a really wonderful example of how, um, you know, we can take advantage of these great skills that people with autism have and put them to good use, and, and they can really be uh, a, a, a great contributor to our community and society in general and so forth. And so, you know, that's just one example of where we're taking advantage of the skills and abilities of people with autism and putting them to good use. Well, you can uh, help out a Seneca. One in 54 kids, that's a lot of kids out there. One in 54 kids are out there are, are dealing with autism. And that's why groups like Ascendigo could use your help. It doesn't matter if it's five bucks or if it's 500 bucks or whatever you want, you can be part of their virtual event. It's the 10th virtual event this Saturday, February 13th at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And uh, you can be part of it. Ascendigo.org is the website. And just learn more about it. You can go to, uh, you can go to autism.org to learn more about autism because it is. It's, a lot of us have an idea what autism is but really don't have an idea what it is. And, it, and it's always a, an advantage if we learn more about it. You can learn more about it at autism.org or ascendigo.org and, and then be part of the event on Saturday, February 13th at 6 p.m. Peter, I really uh, appreciate you spending a little extra time with me today because what you guys are doing is, is amazing. And you're giving kids an opportunity to find out what they're good at so that they can go be great. And that's, that's the key to, 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 to raising kids, whether they have autism or not. Find out what they're good at and help them be great. And that's what you guys are doing. So I thank you for doing that. Thank you, David. Do you mind if I take 10 seconds just to do a quick shout out to our sponsors? Please do. Okay. So we want to thank uh, Sentient Jet. They've been a sponsor for so many years. They've been really wonderful. Rolls Royce Motor Cars, the Hotel Jerome, Aston Times, Aston Magazine, the Little Dell, and the Aston Skiing Company. These, all of these organizations have really been incredibly supportive to us for so many years. We thank them, and uh, if anybody else is interested in uh, joining us either this year or for next year, please give us a call or contact us through our website. So thanks, David. I appreciate that. Ascendigo.org is a website. Ascendigo.org. Check it out. Learn more about Ascendigo. Also, learn more about autism at autism.org. Peter, stay on the uh, line. I want to talk to you off the air, but thanks so much for spending some time sure. with us today. I appreciate it. Thank you, David. The David Box Show, KNFO.